Okay, here we are with exercise of the week number 20, the handstand. This might be a personal favorite of pretty much every trainer at train to move It's usually a barometer for people. Once you can develop the ability to do a full handstand, it's like a rite of passage in training. It's, it's just a move that looks cool, makes you look very athletic. It's fun to do, uh, it's fun to improve on, and, and when you finally get that first one that you can hold for three or four or 10 seconds, it's very rewarding. It's, it's usually a pretty exciting time uh, in, your, in your athletic career. So. Even though we did this one in the first round, the first set of 10 exercises that we went through with you, we wanted to do it again and show it to you on video. And earlier we were just doing the pictures, but now we've upgraded to the videos at this point, so we wanted to do it again. Uh, we're gonna take you through a progression of three, so you're gonna see three examples of how you can work your way into becoming better at handstands, and then uh, we'll be back at the end to wrap it up. We want to do three variations on the handstand. The first one Lauren's going to show us is the donkey kick. This is the easiest introduction into a handstand. From your hands and your knees, what you're going to do is just lift your knees a few inches off the floor. Now the objective in the donkey kick is just to get clearance of both feet off the floor, even if it's just for a second. So Lauren will kick both feet up, land back down onto the ground, and the objective, like I said, is just get your feet in the air for a second so your body has to start to accept all of the weight into the hands, shoulders, arms. And notice that as he's doing it, he's kicking evenly off both feet. This is a key component. Try and avoid the temptation of going off of one leg because you'll inevitably have one leg slightly stronger than the other, which will make it, that'll make it a little bit easier. So kick off both feet evenly. Now from there, as you continue to improve and develop strength through your shoulders and through your back and through your core, now you can develop a full handstand. So now Lauren's going to go all the way up. The premise is exactly the same. You kick off both feet evenly, keep the bulk of the weight in your hands as you go up, try and disperse the weight evenly between the two hands, and then as he lands, notice he's landing fairly softly. He's not allowing his body to really slam back down into the floor. He's bending his knees, dropping the hips each time as he lands. Now Josh is going to come in and show us the next, the more advanced version, the third one for the day which is going to be a hands elevated handstand. Now this one takes quite a bit more power through the shoulders and through the back. Just use your typical weight bench and with both hands on the bench, same concept applies. You're going to push off both feet evenly, kick straight up into the air, and lower yourself back down. Again, notice that he's landing softly. This is key. Don't allow your body to just slam back down into the floor. You need to develop the strength not, to be able to, not only to be able to press all the way up, but to control your body and absorb the landing evenly through all the joints so you're not pounding on the feet and the knees as you land. So now you've seen the progression of the three. Good luck with the hands elevated one. Make sure that you are fully capable of doing them with your hands on your floor before you progress too far into elevating your hands up onto various objects to do the handstands. The next week we won't be introducing a new exercise, but you'll get an entire workout routine based on the last 10 exercises that we've gone over with you. So it'll be a free workout that you can try on your own, incorporating everything that you've learned during the last 10 weeks.